It is, it is now 5 o'clock, November 15, 2016. And I call to order the meeting of the City Council of the City of Victorville. And the City Council sitting is the Library Board of Trustees, Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, successor agency to the Victorville uh, Redevelopment Agency, the Victorville Joint Powers Financing Authority, the Victorville Water District, and the city is housing as its successor. May we have roll call, please? Council Member Kennedy? Here. Council Member McEachran? Here. Council Member Negretti? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Cox? Here. Mayor Garcia? Here. Uh, this is the time and place for the general public to address the city council on any item listed or not listed on the agenda. Per government code section 14954.3, state law prohibits the council from addressing any issue not previously included on the agenda. The council may receive testimony and set the matter to a subsequent meeting. Uh, there is no one in the audience uh, that wants to address the council. Um, therefore, can we have a closed session um, items by our city attorney, please? Thank you, Mayor Garcia. We have uh, actually 12 items listed this evening. However, several of them are related. Uh, on behalf of the City Council, item A is real property negotiations pursuant to Government Code 54956.8. The property location is set forth on the agenda, as are the negotiating parties. Items B and C on the City Council agenda are related also to items H, I, J, and K on the Airport Authority. Uh, agenda that is pending litigation pursuant to government code 54956.9 D1 and that's the litigation between ComAv and the airport authority in the city. The case names and parties to the litigation are set forth on the agenda. Item D is anticipated litigation pursuant to government code 54956.9 D2 and the facts and circumstances pertaining to that litigation are set forth on the agenda. Item E is also anticipated litigation pursuant to Government Code 54956.9D2. And uh, again, the facts and circumstances related to that litigation are set forth on the agenda. Item F is related to item L, which is on the Victorville Water District. Anticipated litigation, again, pursuant to Government Code 54956.9D2. And the facts and circumstances relating to that litigation are set forth on the agenda. Lastly, item G on the City Council is real property negotiations pursuant to Government Code 54956.8. The property location, APN numbers, and negotiating parties are set forth on the agenda. To the extent there is reportable action, we will report it either at the conclusion of the closed session or the commencement of the 6 o'clock regular session. Thank you. We will not recess to closed session and uh, a regular, se uh, regular meeting convenes at 6 p.m. Can't win. Okay. Gloria wants us to keep using the timer. She likes this timer. <laughs> We will be starting just very shortly. <coughs> According to my time, it looks like it's uh, 
And I call to order uh, this um, meeting, uh, November 15, 2016. And I call to order the meeting of the City Council of the City of Victorville and the City Council sitting as the Library Board of Trustees, Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, successor agency to the Victorville Redevelopment Agency, the Victorville Joint Powers Financing Authority, the Victorville Water District, and the city as housing assets successor. Uh, may we have roll call, please? Council Member Kennedy? Here. Council Member McEachern? Here. Council Member Negretti? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Cox? Here. Mayor Garcia? Here. May we have um, closed session announcements by our city attorney, please? Yes, thank you, Mayor Garcia. We actually had <clears throat> 12 items on the agenda this evening several of which were related. Item A was real property negotiations pursuant to government code 54956.8 and the parties and the property location is set forth on the agendas. Items B, C, and then on behalf of the airport authority, H, I, J, and K are all related. They are all existing litigation pursuant to uh, government code 54956.9 D1. This is ComAv versus the airport authority in the city and the specific case numbers and parties to the litigation are set forth on the agenda. Item D and item E were both anticipated litigation pursuant to government code 54956.9 D2 and pursuant to 54956.9 E3, the facts and circumstances pertaining to both of that, those anticipated litigation items are set forth on the agenda. Item F is related to item L, which L is on behalf of the Water District. This again is anticipated litigation pursuant to government code 54956.9 D2 and per government code 54956.9 E3. The facts and circumstances relating to that anticipated litigation is set forth on the agenda. <coughs> lastly, item G is real property negotiations pursuant to government code 54956.8, the property location and the negotiating parties are set forth on the agenda. We actually do have reportable action and it is with respect to item D, anticipated litigation filed uh, pursuant to a, a letter received from the law offices of Jack Silva on behalf of the California River Watch. The city council voted 4-1 uh, with uh, council member McEachern voting no to enter into a settlement agreement with River Watch, uh, California River Watch. Uh, the settlement amount would be $27,500 $27, to cover attorney fees. Uh, incurred by River Watch. Uh, this agreement deals with a settlement of a potential claim under the Clean Water Act, uh, and that claim is uh, similar to a claim being, being dealt with with Lahontan, uh, the Lahontan um, regional, regional, regional Quality Control Board. This agreement basically is subservient to that arrangement, provides for essentially uh, eight years of monitoring, and to the extent that there are any spills uh, that exceed 10,000 gallons, then the city has some, uh, some uh, testing requirements. Other than that, basically, uh, Riverwatch will agree not to sue us or pursue any further claims against the city uh, in consideration for the payment of the attorney's fees. And so we have copies of that agreement available. Thank you. We will have the invocation led by uh, Curtis Green of Burning Bush uh, Church and the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Police Chief Sam Lucia. Please stand. Honorable Mayor, Council Members, if you would please bow your heads. Dear Lord, we come to you today, Lord God, just thanking you, Lord, for just another day that we haven't seen, Lord. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have given us, Lord, the freedoms and the liberties that we have in this country, Lord God. You've established governments over the general population, Lord God, and the city council being one of them, Lord. Your word also says to pray for them that have authority over you. So we pray for these five council members right now, Lord God, that you would continue to lead them and guide them in wisdom for the governing of the city of Victorville, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would just bless them, bless their families as they are away. We thank you for their service, Lord God, and we thank you for all they do. Lord, now on a federal level, Lord God, we just ask for peace all over this United States, Lord God. You said that those that lack wisdom can just ask for wisdom and that you would give it abradedly, Lord God. So we just ask for wisdom and a peace and a calm. Protect our law enforcement and police and fire, Lord God. And we ask all of this in your darling son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do have a uh, proclamation uh, to be presented. I will come down and uh, present the uh, proclamation. Uh, this is Victorville Recycles uh, Week, and um, I believe uh, Dana Armstrong was not able to be with us this evening, but Cindy uh, Port, is that your name? Uh, she will be accepting, I'll come down. The City Council is pleased to declare Victorville Recycles Week and to encourage all citizens to recycle. Cindy, I know you will elaborate on the importance of recycling for now, and I'd like to present you with this proclamation from our City Council. Thank you for your eff <clears throat> efforts to educate our citizens about recycling. Thank you, Mayor Garcia and members of the City Council. I have this proclamation for you, and if you like, I can read it. Yes. Uh, okay. Proclamation, and, it's, and it reads, whereas Victorville residents and businesses dispose of more than 73,000 tons of solid waste each year, and this material is buried in the county's Victorville landfill at a cost of over three million per year. And whereas the solid waste contains valuable materials, including metal, paper, glass, and plastics, which could be used to make new products. And by recycling these materials, Victorville re residents and businesses can save valuable natural resources, provide industry with raw materials needed to make new products, conserve landfill space, and reduce refuse disposal cost, and whereas California State Assembly Bill 939 requires all municipalities to reduce the amount of waste sent to landfill by 50%. Now, therefore, I, Gloria Garcia, Mayor of the City of Victorville, do hereby join the other members of the City Council in proclaiming the week of November 1st to be Victorville Recycles Week. In the city of Victorville, and I urge all citizens, schools and civic organizations and businesses within Victorville to actively participate in the city's recycling programs and consider other ways to reduce waste and save resources during this week and throughout the year. And this to you. Okay, thank you so much, again, uh, Mayor Garcia and members of the City Council. And uh, we are proud to have Victorville Recycles Week. Um, our main focus for Recycles Week is our schools, where we believe that our children are our future and they will take our recycling message back to their homes. Um, some of the main uh, activities that we're doing with our Recycles Week um, are uh, assemblies in the schools. Uh, we have uh, vi been visited by, thank you, we have been visited by Mr. Echo, a recycling uh, environmental superhero. He's visited 10 of our schools. We had 11 schools sign up for Recycles Week. Um, some of the things that they are going to be doing for us are uh, a poster contest, um, recycling sculpture contest, which we have uh, examples of the recycling sculptures are in uh, City Hall, uh, tours of the MRF, the material recycling facility where we um, recycle our materials, and in-class presentations, newspapers and CRV recycling contest, and YouTube video contest. And we will return here to City Council in January to present awards 
uh, to the school and students um, that uh, won the contest. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Moving on to our agenda here, we do not have any appeal hearings uh, this time. Uh, can we have our city clerk present agenda to council and revisions or any revisions to the agenda, please? Yes, Mayor Garcia. Persons who wish to address the council on a specific item or any item that does not appear on the agenda are requested to complete one of the white speaker cards located in the council chamber's lobby and give it to the city clerk prior to the meeting. The mayor will call upon each individual who has submitted a speaker card. Pursuant to government code section 54954.3, state law prohibits the council from addressing any issue not previously included on the agenda. The council may receive testimony and set the matter to a subsequent meeting. Comments are to be limited to three minutes per speaker or less as deemed necessary by the mayor. Communications are to be addressed directly to the city council. Individual comments to staff or members of the audience are not permitted. Any individual or group who engages in disruptive conduct during the meeting will be removed from the chambers by order of the mayor. Thank you for your cooperation. All documents to be considered for approval at this meeting are before the council and there is one revision to tonight's agenda and it is in relation to item number B1. This is a letter in support of staff recommendations that have been, has been submitted by the Building Industry Association. And those are the only revisions for tonight, Mayor Garcia. Thank you. Now we move on to public hearings. B1, uh, public hearing to hear arguments for and against uh, DEV 15-00008. Municipal Code Amendment. Uh, Madam Clerk, please read the uh, recommendation. The recommendation would be that the City Council at the close of the public hearing waive further reading and introduce ordinance number 2359 entitled an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Victorville amending the Victorville Municipal Code to establish new development criteria for residential specific plans and planned unit developments with an environmental exemption. Thank you. At this time, I open the uh, public hearing. I do not have any cards from the public, so uh, I close the uh, public hearing, and um, any uh, comments or questions, uh, discussion by council members? I'll move for adoption and waiving of the further reading. Second. Motion by Mr. McEachran, second by Mr. Kennedy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? None opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Item B2, uh, public hearing to hear arguments for and against amendments to Title 16 of the Victorville Municipal Code. Madam Clerk, please read the recommendation. Recommendation is that the City Council of the, at the close of the public hearing waive further reading and introduce ordinance numbers 2360 and 2361 entitled an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Victorville relating to various amendments to Title 16 of the Victorville Municipal Code including but not limited to administration definitions, development standards, permitted and conditional land uses, off-street parking nuisances and assorted corrections updates with an environmental exemption and an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Victorville relating to various amendments to Title 16, Chapter 5 of the Victorville Municipal Code, including but not limited to updates, revisions, and deletions of existing provisions in accordance with the most recent California State Mandated Building Code State Water Resources Control Board policies and Federal Emergency Management Agency requirements with an environmental exemption. 
Thank you. At this time, I open the uh, public hearing. And again, I do not have any cards from anyone that wants to um, address the uh, council. Therefore, I close the uh, public hearing. Any um, comments, questions by council members? Uh, Mayor, I, I, these things seem so routine uh, and so dull, but the fact is they have involved a significant amount of work by staff, and the BIA has participated. And I, I, I think we're going to approve it, but we need to acknowledge all the hard work that's gone into these uh, changes. I'll move approval Definitely. and waive further reading. Second. Motion, motion by motion. Mr. Kennedy, second by Mr. McEachern. Uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem has a question. Um, on page 5 of 28, powers and duties, the zoning administrator shall have the power and duty to review and make decisions on those application types identified in Table 5.1. It goes on to say the zoning administrator shall have final authority over land use related animal control code enforcement issues subject to the appeal rights in Chapter 2, Article 2. And Chapter 2, Article 2, Article 3, Article 3. Article 2 is a composition, but it doesn't indicate that. I'm, I can remember some time ago when we had individuals complaining to the council and said they didn't have the right to come to the city council. And we determined that anyone and everyone has the right to come to the city council. This here created an established city of Victorville to position of zoning administrator, which shall be appointed by city manager, powers and duties. We go back to the same thing. Zoning administrator shall have final authority over land use related and so on. Um, I'm, I'm not sure um, what it really means, but anyone has the right to come before the council. We want it to be resolved with the staff. It can't be resolved with the staff. It should be resolved by our city manager. It can't be resolved there. Why doesn't this say they have the right to appeal to the city council? Is that a question to the attorney, the rest of the council, or the staff? Uh, Mr. Cox, that uh, that was the intent. That should be written that way. I'm not. I'm not exactly familiar with where the actual change is in this. I was trying to flip to it at this point. The goal of this was we were uh, attempting to bring animal control, which is now under the development department, into their codes, into our code. Uh, the attorneys were still working through that issue, so that actually was separated out, and we're trying, we weren't planning on doing any of those changes tonight. Those aren't before you right now. Uh, I would need to see whether just having that word in there, animal control, is a glitch or whether it can go through like that. But. Uh, the goal of the appeal it, it process says it has wasn't. The rights under, uh, chapter two, Article two, but if you go through it, it's Chapter one, Article two, Chapter one, Article three, Chapter two, Article three, Chapter Article two is not here. So I didn't know if this is means that it's existing someplace and it hasn't been amended, and that contains the language, or if it's been omitted. I'm not sure why it would not be included. Uh, I think that this is good. I think it's right. I think we will do it, but I want it approved subject to language that allows any individual that's aggrieved or can't come to a conclusion or can't come to agreement to be able to appeal to the city council. That's why we're here. Yeah, that, and Mayor Pro Tem Cox, that is absolutely the intent of the ordinance. Um, you may have hit on it yourself. I was going to mention that, um, you know, not being exactly familiar with which page you're on, um, you may be only looking at uh, sections that are actually being changed. So therefore, if, if Article 2 isn't being changed, it wouldn't appear here. I don't want to say that definitively w without getting together with you to study it a little bit in closer detail. Um, if that's your, your only concern, I think it would be appropriate to, to, to make a motion subject to, you know, city attorney review that, in fact, that is the case, that, of course, anyone has the ability to appeal you know, the, the general understanding that I have is that any decision of the zoning administrator can be appealed to the planning commission, which can then be appealed to the city council. That's the intent of our ordinance. Uh, I'm assuming that is the way that it reads when you see the full ordinance. Um, so I would recommend a, approval subject to confirmation from the attorney that that is, in fact, uh, the way this works. I have a motion and a second. Can that? Yes, that can, that? Yes, that can occur. 
I believe the reference is to Chapter 2 in the Municipal Code, and I believe that is the correct provision that you always have the appeal right to the City Council, but we will make sure that that, if the language isn't there correctly, we'll make sure that's in there. Very thank well. you. And also think, based on some of the conversations we've had on this subject, the, the, regardless of what the ordinance might have said, there may be an educational issue at the window uh, where people in the planning department make statements that don't fit the ordinance. So I would like to make sure that gets rectified too. Okay. A motion for approval by Council Member Kennedy and second by Council Member McEachern. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? None opposed. Motion carries unanimously. We move on to consent calendar. The consent calendar items C1 through C16 can be approved with one motion unless there is an item that needs to be uh, pulled for discussion. I'll move consent. Second. Motion by Mr. McEachern, second by Mr. Kennedy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? None opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Now we move on to written communications. Item D1, cooperative work agreement, time extension request, Bear Valley Road Bridge over BNSF Railroad. Madam Clerk, read the recommendation. Recommendation is that the City Council request a time extension from the State Department of Finance until July 31st, 2017 for federal funds used for design on the Bear Valley Road Bridge over BNSF Railroad and authorize the Mayor to sign the time extension agreement. Move approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Kennedy, second by Mr. McEachern. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? None opposed, motion carries unanimously. Item D2, establish a three-way stop control at Mall Boulevard and Petaluma Road. Uh, Madam Clerk, read the recommendation. Recommendation is that the City Council adopt resolution number 16-056, which establishes a three-way stop control at Mall Boulevard and Petaluma Road. Question. This is signal or just stop signs? This is just stop signs at Petaluma and Mall Boulevard. Is that uh, improvement across the wash going to be completed anytime soon? That's a different question that <laughs> we don't really have uh, the answer to. It's, uh, as far as I know, still uh, questionable as to the private property owner at this point in time. I know there was uh, some struggles with it. Okay. The, the stop is the current stop is on Mall, Mall Road, but nothing on Petaluma. Is there's right? currently there's it's oh. unprotected at all. It's there is uh, no well there's a stop sign on Petaluma, but nothing on Mall Boulevard. Nothing. Right. So the folks that are coming from that neighborhood down Petaluma and want to turn left or right on Mall Boulevard are, are really struggling. I go through there fairly often. They have to dodge so. traffic. So we're going to add the stop at Mall Boulevard. Uh, essentially, adding two stop signs a north and a southbound although there's a curve there but yeah the only thing i would say is i used to live in that area and i can only imagine the stacking that's going to occur during the holiday season i don't know how you're going to deal with that i don't imagine you'll get the stop signs in before this holiday season but um unless you're ready to go but um that is going to be a huge problem both coming into the mall and leaving the mall uh, keep an eye on it because I don't think that's going to be fun. I have a motion. I so move. Second. Motion by Mr. Cox, second by Mr. Negretti. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? None opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Item uh, D3, award of contract to Ironwood Plumbing, Inc., for the installation of a hot water processing boiler for the Victorville Wastewater Treatment Facility. Madam Clerk, read the recommendation, please. Recommendation is that the City Council award a construction contract to Ironwood Plumbing, Inc. for the installation of a hot water processing boiler for the Victorville Wastewater <coughs> Treatment Facility in an amount not to exceed $237,820. Motion 
what are we doing now? Is it, this isn't a replacement. This is adding a boiler. This is a redundant boiler in case uh, the oh, boiler that we have boiler. now has a problem, needs maintenance, or, or whatever. This will keep That's the plant right. running. Okay. I'll move approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Kennedy, second by Mr. Negretti. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? None opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Item D4, Supplemental Environmental Project Memorandum of Understanding, MOU. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you please uh, read the uh, recommendation? Recommendation is that the City Council approve the MOU with the California Regional Water Quality Control Board. Move approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Negretti, second by Mr. Cox. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? None opposed, motion carries unanimously. Item D5, purchase of a three John Deere backhoe loader. Uh, Madam Clerk, read the recommendation, please. The recommendation is that the City Council and Board of Directors approve an award to RDO Equipment Company as distributor for John Deere construction retail sales, the piggyback purchase of two John Deere 310 SL HL backhoe loaders in the amount of $124,370.92 each and one John Deere 410L backhoe loader in the amount of $139,768.59 under the National Joint Powers Alliance contract number 032515JDC as budgeted for in the fiscal year 2016-2017 Capital Improvement Project budget. Move approval. We've got three purchases. Uh, do they each need to be dealt with separately? I mean, I think. I think you could probably take all of them together. Is that right, Andre? Uh, yeah, we can do D5, D6, and D7 as one. Yeah, as long as the motion is clear, that's for all three items. Yeah. The motion will be for all three items. There's an excavator trailer on D6 and a motor grader on D7. Motor grader on, yeah, motor on grader, D7. Right. I'd move approval for all three unless somebody wants to deal with them separately. Second. Motion by Mr. Kennedy, second by Mr. Negretti. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? None opposed. Motion carries unanimously. And in case you wonder later, these are all on our capital improvement program for this year. Yes. These were discussed during the budget. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, item D8, amendment number one to Larry Walker and Associates Agreement for the City Sewer System man Management Plan. Madam Clerk, read the uh, recommendation. Recommendation is that the City Council approved Amendment Number One to the Professional Services Provider Agreement with Larry Walker and Associates in an amount not to exceed thirty-one thousand four hundred dollars. Question: This is a study for assistance with documentation and implementation regarding the City Sewer System Management Plan. It doesn't have anything to do with fees, is that correct, or does it? Are you sure? Isn't that all part of the fee review? This is separate from the fee review. We do have a fee study going on right now. NBS is the consulting company working on that. This is separate. This is dealing really with the sewer system management plan. I move approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Kennedy, second by Mr. Cox. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? None opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Item D9, amendment number one to <coughs> Dockin Engineering Inc. Agreement for the Green Tree Boulevard Extension Project. Madam Clerk, read the recommendation. Recommendation is that the City Council approve Amendment Number 1 to the Consultant Professional Services Provider Agreement with Dock and Engineering, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $286,832. Move for approval. 
Motion by Mr. McEachern, second by Mr. Kennedy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? None opposed. Motion carries Aye. unanimously. Now we move on to uh, public comments, and I do have some cards. Madam Clerk, did you want to read uh, the one so we can inform them of the uh, three minute? You'd like me to read the statement, Mayor Garcia, yes. regarding public comment? This is the time and place for the general public to address the City Council on any item listed or not listed on the agenda. Per Government Code Section 54954.3, state law prohibits the Council from addressing any issue not previously included on the, agenda, on the agenda. The Council may receive testimony and set the matter to a subsequent meeting. Comments are to be limited to three minutes per individual or less as deemed necessary by the Mayor depending upon the number of individuals desiring to speak. All communications are to be addressed directly to the Council and not members of the audience. This is a professional business meeting and courtesy and decorum are expected. Please refrain from any debate between audience and speaker making loud noises or engaging in any activity which might be disruptive to the decorum of the meeting. Thank you. Uh, the first card that I have is Al Cotillo. Al, Al. Hi. I'm here to talk about my neighborhood on Riviera Drive where the city never really does a lot that we're doing our best to make the neighborhood look nice. There's a mobile home on that lot on that Riviera Drive and I forgot the address I think it's 10911 Riviera Drive. The police get more calls they waste more time going over that place because people keep moving in it it looks like a dump. These investment people are buying these properties up and just letting them sit there and rot and make the neighborhood look like a dump. It's up to the city to do something about that. I can't do nothing about it. No private citizen can do nothing about it. You gotta make the banks or the investment people that are buying these places and then they rent them out to drug addicts and everything else. They don't care who they rent them out to, they rent them out to anybody. But the thing, they even cut a hole in the fence with, with a clip so they could get in through the back way on the golf course. And, and uh, the cops are spending a lot of time there because they're getting a lot of calls. And whether they're telling the people, that, that place has been boarded up so many times and they just pull the boards off and go right back in again. And it's, that's not the only place. There's, there's a several mobile homes that, that, that business people own them. You people have to make them fix them up or you fix them up and send them the bill. I mean, it's making our neighborhood look like a dump. Your neighborhood's nice, isn't it? I'm sure it is. We like our neighborhood to look nice too. And we don't want no crime in our neighborhood. You, like, you don't want no crime in your neighborhood. So I, I'm hoping the city will do something. If there's somebody I can call tomorrow and make sure I give them the correct address, you can find out who owns the place and why don't, don't they fix it up or you'll do it and get send them a bill. I think they'll fix it up real quick then, or fix it up and rent it out to some decent people. Also, I read in the paper where you're thinking about spending $4 million on renting a place where people can walk. Now, you guys are all very intelligent people, or you wouldn't be up there. Don't you think it's a lot more logical to spend $4 million on police protection and putting bulletproof windows in the police cars rather than a place where people can walk with their dogs or whatever. There's so many places to walk up here, it's unbelievable. I walk every day, I don't have no problems. I walk on the sidewalk. There's no problems. But spending $4 million for a place for people to walk when we're at war, and I don't think any of you really believe or sunk in that we're at war. You let 28 people just move in here that are from Syria that are our enemies. Now, I don't know if those 28 people are our enemies or not, but you don't, and I don't, and the federal government don't either. And there's going to be more of them coming, too. Now they're all going to hear about it. Oh, Victorville, California, yeah, go up there. I mean, I, I just can't see spending $4 million on a walkway when the police could use, they just killed four more cops sitting in their police cars. 
two and and two in each different cities. Went up and shot them right through the windows. Pops are sitting there doing their duty, and and I I just don't understand. Like I said, you guys are all smart people. Though you, you should know logically, the police should be protected. We're at war, and if something happens to the police or a couple of guys get somebody walks up and shoots them, how are you gonna feel? when you have the opportunity to make sure they're protected. Also, there's one thing I have to say before I leave that's very, very important to all of you. Your time is up, Val. When, uh, when I went to, to, I was in the ballot place at the- Sir, the, your time is you're up. Gonna, you're gonna wanna hear this, this is important. Time is up, I'm sorry. Your, your time your, is up. The city of Victorville wasn't even on the ballot. Your time is up. The city of Victorville wasn't even on the ballot. Marcy found out about it, and she went and fixed it and settled everything up and make sure that you guys were all on the ballot. Sir, I'm sorry, your time is up. Nobody here would have got one vote. The whole city wasn't on the ballot. Well, somebody please. Uh, that, that's your job right there. Well, I'm letting you know best. that your time is up. Thank you. The next card that I have is William Bursoff. Hi, thank you for having me here today. Uh, basically, uh, I want to congratulate Jim and Gloria as well as Blanca Gomez in winning. Um, sorry, Ryan, you were with me at the bottom of the ballot, so it's a tough break. Um, I did kind of prove myself, though, in running that I do have the chops to be on a committee and would ask that I be on a short list, hopefully, to be appointed to a committee if one does come up. Uh, that's my main purpose here. The secondary purpose while I'm here is regarding political signs next to ballots and polling places. Um, we all have volunteers. Everybody really doesn't know what's going on. And inadvertently, certain politicians had their political signs very close to polling places, which is a sensitive subject for people that are running. And I'd like to ask that, that city actually make an ordinance saying that 1,000 feet two days before and two days after an election day is not allowed to have any political sign next to that polling place. I think that that is a good place to do that because it stops electioneering and also allows an independent voter to go in there and vote without being persuaded immediately by a sign, but actually be educated and go in there and know who they're voting for. Alrighty, uh, that's all I had. Is there any questions you guys have for me by chance? No, but thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, and unfortunately the council's prevented from engaging uh, in conversation or even answering questions really during uh, public comments because uh, these items aren't on the agenda so the public wasn't advised that they may come up. The next card that I have is Raymond Herrera. Good evening City Council, good evening Mayor, good evening America. Last week we went to the polls and we uh, set America on its end. We voted in Donald Trump. President-elect Donald Trump. A new day in America is here. No longer will the agenda be Agenda 21, Syrian refugees, illegal aliens, or whatever it is that you want up there. From this day forth, because of Donald J. Trump and the will, the voice, and the mandate of the people, this body politic and all body politics at all levels of government will adhere to the voice of the people. I've been a political activist for 12 years. In the beginning, they laughed. They're not laughing this day. There's millions of Americans that feel the way that I feel. In fact, I will tell you, I am the voice of we the people. Donald Trump will not allow illegal aliens to proliferate our communities, our states, and our countries. This is why he was elected. When you look at the map after the elections, it was red. It was red with Democrats, independents, of course, Republicans. I want you to know that the will of the people will govern this body politic, and across America. No longer will Obama, the Obama administration, repress or oppress the American people. I also want you to know that I have a direct line to 
President-elect Donald Trump, his issue, my issue, has always been illegal immigration. City Councilman McAkron, you went to the newspapers and you lied about Syrian refugees. And I spoke the week before the elections, and you lost. But that's not the reason, the only reason you lost. You lost because you want tow lanes. You sit on sandbags. You lost because you want, like this gentleman said, to spend $4 million for people to walk. That's called Agenda 21. It goes with tow lanes and building apartment buildings for the American people to live. Agenda 21 will not allow the American people to own property in the years to come. This is why you lost, McAkron, because you did not adhere to the public opinion of we the people. And for every one of you that sits up there this day, it's a new day, and you better start listening to we the people, because if you don't, you will not be sitting there. And I have taken, you know, this body politic to task. Rutherford is no longer here. Cabriales is no longer here. McAkron, your time is up, Mr. No Rora. Here. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Those were all the cards that I have. Is there anyone else? Uh, do we have any other cards? Or no, no, that's it. Okay. Now we move on to um, <coughs> report from city manager. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. Just a couple things. One. I need to check that timer. Kind of feels like it's a little longer than three minutes sometimes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like regarding it. the first speaker who already walked out, as did our last speaker apparently, the I believe the $4 million that Mr. Cotillo was talking about was actually an active transportation grant that we received from the state of California to put in walking lane and bike lanes that would be violating the law if we spent them on policemen or, or firefighters or any other purpose other than what the grant was obtained for, that's more for the public. I know the council knows that. I think most of the folks in the audience know that, but in case anybody out there in TV land is wondering what that was about, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So a few upcoming uh, items. Uh, Thursday night in Old Town uh, at uh, 5 p.m., uh, the Planning Commission is having a workshop regarding the Old Town specific plan. Uh, it's kind of an introductory workshop for the draft uh, Old Town specific plan that was uh, never finalized, mm, I don't know, eight years ago or so, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but uh, the, the, the folks that attend will be given information about the specific plan and input uh, will be taken uh, by the Planning Commission. Uh, of course, everyone's invited, including council members, including staff, including uh, the public. Uh, it's actually going to be at uh, what we call, what they call the Unity Hall. It's the old B of A building. I think most of the folks on the dais would know it as. Um, also, uh, this coming Saturday uh, from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. is a free uh, disposal and dump event at our material recovery facility, the MRF, at 17,000 Abbey Lane. Uh, City of Victorville residents who bring proof of uh, residency, a utility bill, uh, will be able to drop off recycling items and, and dump uh, for free uh, at that point in time from 8 to 1. Um, upcoming uh, Saturday, December 3rd, is our Christmas parade put on by the Kiwanis at 10 a.m. And then in the afternoon, starting at 4, is our tree lighting extravaganza right out here at City Hall uh, with the tree actually being lit sometime right after dark. So hope everybody comes out for that. Of course, we will have Mrs. Claus and Santa Claus here and all of that uh, revelry. Um, one thing that will probably get me into trouble, but I'm going to say it anyway, <coughs> No promises, but, uh, and I'm looking at our two engineers in the audience here, um, I'm told that Bear Valley Road and Amargosa Road will be completely open, all lanes open, working, everything, essentially the project done, other than a few minor uh, slowdowns here or there, but it should be done tomorrow afternoon. So hopefully within 24 hours, we will be flowing through there well again. So that should actually help a little bit with the traffic congestion that currently sits at uh, Petaluma right now, so that we discussed a little bit earlier. So that's all I have on my on my. You list can pass that. that buck to them, but we're holding you personally <laughs> responsible. You can hold me personally responsible so long as you also give me credit if it actually happens. I'm <laughs> I'm fine with that. So. Uh, okay. Now um, reports from council members. A couple of things. 
it's really unfortunate that so many people in our, in our city and in cities everywhere don't understand the the rules and constraints on city finance. We probably spend through this city somewhere between 250 and 300 million dollars every year. If these five people had complete control over that, we'd spend it all on law enforcement. Well, we'd fix some streets, but we'd hire more cops. We'll get excited, Sam. Yes. <laughs> the fact is, we don't have control over 80% of that money. The only piece that we control is the 55 million or so in our general fund, funded almost entirely by, by, well not entirely, but largely by property tax and sales tax. And that's where police and fire get paid for. It's out of that fund. We, if we've got transportation funds, we can't spend it on police and fire. If we have revenues from the water district, we can't spend it on police and fire. This is just a fact of life. And it's, it's troubling when people complain about we spend it on this or that or something else when we really ought to hire more policemen. Sad, but that's, that's a problem. My other comment was, and, and uh, this is absolutely on point to our last speaker. Um, personally, I want to express my thanks and my appreciation to Ryan McEachran for eight years of dedicated service, thoughtful leadership, his record of achievement, his willingness to stand up on some controversial issues that we've had over the last eight years. Personally, I'm disappointed with that part of the outcome of the election, um, at least the piece for Ryan whether the citizens of this city know it or not, whether they understand it or not, they owe a huge debt of gratitude to Ryan for his service. Madam Mayor, if I may. I'd also like to uh, thank um, Council Member McCachran and former Mayor uh, McCachran for his service as well and uh, his leadership. Uh, to the high desert. Believe it or not, we can't do it all by ourselves here. We're just one city. But uh, all of Ryan's contributions that he's, he's, he's involved with are far-reaching, and I think we all know that we can count on him uh, as a community leader. And we have community leaders everywhere, Sam and the fire department and education and whatnot. Um, so um, this is service to the community. And, and it's not as glamorous as it looks, but uh, I really appreciate everything he's done and, and look forward to continue working with him. Madam Mayor, uh, I was prepared to make some of the same comments, especially in, in Mr. McEachern's case. He got very involved in community and community activities and community organizations a long time ago, which then led to him being involved in organizations in the community that serve the community, which then led him to be involved in the Planning Commission. Now, how long did you serve on the Planning Commission? Seven. Seven years. So there's an awful lot of individuals who come on this council with a head start. Ryan was one of those who understood how it worked and the complications and then served the city well. Um, I don't, I, I, privately I will talk to him and thank him personally for his years of service. I know he's going to continue to be involved in the community. I still know he is committed to public service, and you can count on seeing him continue to be involved. One of the things that that has uh, that I have talked about before, um, in regard to public service, we we when individuals come and talk to the council, we do listen. Although if it's not agendized, we cannot engage in debate because. If we were going to engage in debate, it has to be on the agenda. If it's on the agenda, other people may show up. But, and therefore, and sometimes it's been important enough that we did agendize it so that we, so that the public could at least have some input. The expenditure of funds and the grants, thank you, Doug, for bringing that up, because uh, when we receive a grant for a certain use, it has to be used for a certain use. If we don't use it, we turn it back in. We do not have the authority to make a determination that we want to use a grant that's specifically earmarked for something for something else. You can criticize us all over the place, but if someone would make one phone call or come to the counter at City Hall, we would be more than happy to sit down with those individuals and try to give them information. I would ask when people hear these things, say, 
show me. Give me something. If there, the city is violating the laws, show me. Give me something. If the city is doing something wrong, show me. Give me something. Because this is the silly season, which I hope is over. And I have heard more outrageous things about our conduct, about taking care of a building which wasn't our building, uh, and on and on and on. It was actually, I couldn't believe that people would say these things. But on the other hand, when you looked at the two people running for the President of the United States, I couldn't believe they would say the thing. So I guess they set the tone. I hope not. I hope that we don't treat each other that way. And in regard to the Syrian issue that keeps coming up, this city council did not know anything about it. We didn't approve it. We were not contacted. We still have not been contacted. There is no requirement, but that's going to be resolved. I know because one of the candidates said they're going to sue the federal government. Of course, you can't use the public money for that, so I'm assuming they're going to use their own money, and I want them to move ahead and use their own money and sue the federal government on that issue. But this city council cannot. And if the federal government determines that they're going to tell us about those issues, they will. If they determine they're not going to, they won't. And there's not a thing this council can do. I don't know why we have to keep pointing that out to people. And if they did the research, they know that. And somehow blame a council member for not doing something about it when there's nothing that council member can do. There's nothing this whole council can do. But those are the informational things that are given out. And when you hear it, say, show me. Prove to me that what you're saying is the truth. I, I swear, I've never heard more lies than through both the presidential election and this council election and the supervisorial election. I'm almost embarrassed to know some of the people that made those comments. But hopefully it's over. And now we can move on ahead, make the city uh, good. We've made great strides. We're going to continue to make great strides. But I think it's necessary as a policy of the council when people get up and make comments that we answer it either by notifying the individual and s providing them a copy of the truth or agendizing it and at the next meeting have a discussion. There are a lot of people that watch this council meeting. I know, I get a lot of phone calls from people who call me and ask me what did the council mean or the attorney mean or the manager mean when they said so and so. We're being watched, that is good. That is very good. I don't have a problem with that at all. So I want people who, who, who love this community to get involved in the community. And the one thing that I want to stress, we promised to clean the community up. We've made strides. We have a long way to go. So let's don't lose track of our promise that we have made to the citizens and to ourselves. Thank you. I also want to say that uh, for me, it has been a very sad day to know that we will not have our council member, Ryan McCochran, with us. He's such a great asset uh, to the city and the people and the entire uh, high desert, uh, or the county for that matter. Um, I just feel that uh, sometimes things are not fair but I, I do understand that he has dedicated so many years to our city and deprived himself probably of spending more time with his children, which I see now that you say you will be doing. Uh, he still has uh, small children. Uh, people like Mayor Pro Tim Cox and myself were too old to have small children now. <laughs> but <laughs> so we still... And we dedicate our time to the city and the people, but we still neglect our children because we do have families and grandchildren. And, uh, but we do it because we want to, not because they're paying us, you know, uh, a tremendous amount of money. Um, so I can understand uh, the desire for Mr. McCochran to serve the city with a good heart and uh, just reaching out to do the best that he could. And like I said, it's a very sad day for me and uh, I appreciate him very much. I've learned from him and I just wish him the best in whatever endeavors he chooses to do later on. Wow, well thank you all. Um, 
Uh, well, first and foremost, I'm going to be here on the 6th because there is this thing called the transfer of power and the peaceful part of that, and, and I want to make sure that I'm a part of that. I, I, I believe that I should be, and um, I look forward to whomever the person is. I know it's kind of gone back and forth over the last day and a half, um, but whomever that person is, that, uh, that I'm a part of that process. Um, but I, I've appreciated working with each and every one of you um, with former members of this council, <laughs> with staff, um, Sam, all the text messages and phone calls you and I have had, <laughs> too numerous to count, um, all the staff out there, you guys have all been great. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Oh, but I think we should give Ryan a hand for serving the city. But I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> hope not. We hope to keep you close by. There's nothing else? Uh, Are we going? Are we going to no, we don't. No, we, we, we do we not need to. No. Right. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.